pounds. Uh, I know I gained a bit of weight off of eating a lot of food, but it is what it is. Um, so I think we should be able to finish this course within the next two weeks. Um, it's pretty doable. I know uh, we're halfway done unit six and then logs is not the hardest thing in the world and rates of change is a smaller unit. Um, in terms of the CPT, uh, we haven't been giving, we haven't been given any direction concerning it. So just stay attentive to news about that. Uh, hopefully we get some news soon and not, I'd rather have news sooner rather than later. Okay. Um, so my mistake, I actually do get to see you guys, I believe the last week of Quadmaster two, which is the week of the 25th. Uh, so yeah, so we'll be online until the 24th, I believe. I think that was discussed. And then that last week of Quadmaster two, I think you guys will be in class. So with that said, we are going to move on to double angle formulas. All right. Um, so basically what a double angle formula is, is we're going to distinguish a compression, uh, a horizontal or vertical compression and a vertical stretch or compression. So we already know from our trig graphs that f of theta is equal to sine two theta is not the same as saying f of theta is equal to two sine theta. The first is a horizontal compression. And the second is what? What kind of transformation do we have in the second equation? So we also have a vertical stretch in the second equation. <clears throat> so the first graph over here, this one's vertically stretched, okay? So this one's gonna be our f of theta is equal to two sine theta. And then the next one, which is over here, the dark graph is f of theta is equal to sine two theta. So after this lesson, we're gonna get into some trig identities. Uh, you will be using the compound formulas, the compound angle formulas, and the double angle formulas that we're going to learn about here today. So we cannot factor out uh, from the argument since sine two x is not equal to sine is not equal to two sine x. Okay, uh, this is never true. Okay, unless. Uh, no, it's never true. Uh, so how do we handle questions like this? So we want to find the exact value of sine of pi over eight. So we could try to find two angles, positive or negative, that give us pi over eight, and then use our positive or negative formulas. But we will not be able to find two angles that will use the standard angles, OK? Or we determine the value of two sine x, given that sine x is equal to negative two over three where x is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to two pi, but we need a relationship between the angle x and the double angle two x. So this is where we're gonna get into our double angle formulas. So we have our set of double angle formulas. So the first one we have is sine of two a is equal to sine of a plus a, which simplifies to sine of a times cos a plus cos a times sine a, okay? Uh, so we're just simplifying the 2a by arguing that it's a plus a, and then we're using the compound angle formula that we learned from uh, the previous lesson which gives us sine A times cos A plus cos A times sine A, 
but because we have two a's here, we can't put in that b value, which means that sine of 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a, because they're just simplifying this part over here. <clears throat> so if I were to go a step further, we would have sine 2 sine a times 2 cos a, and then when you factor out the 2, you're left with 2 times sine a cos of a. So we're just using, we're just simplifying stuff here using what we learned from the last lesson. And if I seem a bit rusty today, my apologies. I honestly, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I did not look at any type of work during the break. I was just on relaxation mode and break mode. So no, I did not prepare for uh, the next few lessons, but we will get through it somehow, some way. So if I end up messing up uh, throughout this lesson, just correct me, okay? Uh, but as you can see from the first one, from this first double angle formula of sine of 2a, we're just simplifying 2a as equal to a plus a, and then we are using our compound angle formula for sine of a. Okay, so hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So the next one, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna take cos of 2a. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna have 2a equal to a plus a. So cos of 2a is equal to cos of a plus a. And because of our compound angle formula, cos of a plus b, we are able to write it in this form over here. Obviously, we don't have the b value in here because we have two a values. So we're just going to, we're basically just taking this and replacing it with a instead of b. So cos of a plus b in our regular uh, compound angle formula gives us cos of a times cos of b minus sine of a times sine of b. But because we simplify 2a into a plus a, we can write it as cos of a times cos of a minus sine a times sine a. And when we simplify that, we get cos of 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. So you guys kind of understand how these compound, how the compound angle formulas from last lesson are working in this lesson right now? I see one yes from Jose. So the last lesson, Yusuf, was the one with the compound angle formulas. So we had cos of a plus b, cos of a minus b. We had sine of a plus b, sine of a minus b, and then 10a plus b, 10a minus b. Uh, those formulas you don't have to remember. Uh, you don't have to have them memorized. So if you were to pull out uh, lesson 6.2, uh, you would probably be able to see the similarities between uh, this angle or that formula with the compound angle formulas. So I don't blame you guys for not remembering what happened two weeks ago because it was two weeks ago. So we have cos of 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to get into our something that we should know. So we have, we also know that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1. How do we know this? We can just give an example. So let's let a equal to 30 degrees. So we need to prove that sine squared a plus cos squared a gives us one. So we get sine squared of 30 plus cos squared 30 is equal to one. 
Uh, so what is sine of 30 degrees? So does anyone, come on. <laughs> so this is gonna be a refresher. What is sine of 30 degrees? <clears throat> Let's see if you guys remember your trick. Remember your special triangles, sine of pi over six. It is one over two. So we have one over two squared. And what is cos of 30 degrees? Root 3 over 2 is equal to 1. And now all we're going to do is factor in the exponents into the bracket. So we got 1 over 4 plus 3 over 4, which is equal to 1. 4 over 4 is equal to 1, therefore 1 equals 1, which means sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1. So that identity holds true. So given that we have that, we can also figure out that cos of 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a, which is equal to 1 minus sine squared a minus sine squared a, which is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So this is another double angle formula. And then the next one also follows. We can also rewrite cos 2a as 2 cos squared a minus 1. And then we have tan 2 of a, which is equal to tan a plus a, which is just equal to the addition formula for tan in the compound angle formula. And when we simplify, we get tan 2a is equal to 2 tan of a minus over 1 minus tan squared a. This will all start making sense once we start doing some examples. So example one, I'm gonna start pretty simple. So we wanna express the following as a single trigonometric ratio, okay? So based off this format over here, from the formulas above, what double angle formula does two sine 3x cos 3x best represent? Which one of the double angle formulas? Okay, I see one that says sine 2a. Does everybody agree with Jose? <clears throat> so we're gonna let a equal to 3x, and then we're left with 2 sine a cos a. So that involves the double angle formula of sine of 2a. So because our a is 3x, what would the outside, what would the left side of our equation be? So we have sine 2a is equal to sine, so 2 sine a cos a. And we said let a equal to 3x. So what would the left side of our equation be if you were to just express this as a single trig ratio? So remember, so yeah, it would just be sine 
of 2 times 3x, which is equal to sine of 6x. So therefore, our whole equation would be sine of 6x is equal to 2 sine 3x cos 3x. Okay, so let's try another one and see if you guys are catching on. So the next one we have is cos squared of 3x over 2 minus sine squared of 3x over 2. So which double angle formula does this represent? So cos 2a. So we have cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a, what would our let statement be in this scenario? So we're going to put let a equal to 3x over 2. And all we're going to do is plug it into our left side. So we get cos of 2a is equal to cos of 2 times 3x over 2. And when we simplify it, what are we left with? Cos 3x, because the 2s cancel out. So we're left with cos of 3x. So is it getting a bit better now? Right now we're just simplifying it to give it one single trigonometric expression. Uh, but the next ones we're going to start using the Cartesian plane um, in terms of finding points and angles related to the double angle formula. So the last one we have is C is equal to 1 over 2 sine of theta over 2 times cos of theta over 2. So which double angle formula does this represent? Or which one does that does it more more closely resemble? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna use sine two a is equal to two sine a cos of a. Okay, so we're gonna let a be theta over two. <clears throat> and then we need to use sine 2a. So if a is theta over 2, then we're going to get sine of 2 times theta over 2, which is equal to what? sine theta, which is equal to sine theta. But for our double angle formula, what does the coefficient in front of sine have to be? Two, right? So both sides 
have to, so the right side has to have a coefficient of two for it to work. So what do we multiply? That by to give us two. So what number multiplied by one over two gives us two? Four. Okay, so which means that we have to divide this whole thing by four. So our equation would be sine of theta over four is equal to one half sine theta over two times cos of theta over two. I know it may seem a bit confusing, uh, but once we actually start using and plotting points and terminal arms, um, it'll be much more clearer. Okay, so that is going to be our next example. We're going to be using our terminal arms and our points X, Y, and R. So we have example two. So if sine of X is equal to four over five, where X is greater than or equal to pi over two, the less than or equal to pi, we want to determine the exact value of sine 2x. So let's just start off with writing our equation. So we know sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. And now we want to draw this on our Cartesian plane. So based off of our restrictions, uh, which quadrant is this going to land in? Worse, yep, it's gonna land in quadrant two. So this is pi over two, and this is pi. <clears throat> so we have our opposite side, or our y value as four. And we have our r as five. So how are we going to figure out our x value? So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Do you guys know why we have to find our adjacent value or our x value? For cos, exactly. So the reason why we're finding our x value is because we need it for our cos ratio. Okay? So I showed you this Pythagorean triple so many times. What is the value of x without even computing it in your head? Three. Okay, but because it's in the negative x axis, it's going to be negative three. So our x is negative 3, which means cos of x is what? What is our ratio for cos of x? So we're cos x is equal to negative 3 over 5. So that's perfect. And now all we have to do is sub this into our equation. So we have sine of 2x is equal to 2 times sine of x, which we know is 4 over 5, times cos of x, which we know is negative 3 over 5. And now all we're going to do is just simplify this equation. So we get 2 times negative 12 over 5, over 25, sorry. And what does that simplify into? What is 2 times negative 12 over 25? Negative 24 over 25.
which means sine of 2x is equal to negative 24 over 25. So we know power over 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to pi is in quadrant 2. Okay? But because this, but because sine 2x gives us negative, in which quadrants does this have to be in? So in what quadrants is sine negative? So sine is negative in three and in quadrant three and four. But our restriction states it has to be between pi over two and pi. Okay. But we can somehow adjust this to fit our double angle formula. Okay. So we have sine of 2x, okay, which means our angle has to be doubled. So we have 2x in the middle. What do we have to do with the two restrictions on the left and the right? Just like multiply by 2? Yeah, you're just multiplying both sides by 2. So 2, two times power over 2 gives us, gives us pi. And 2 times 2 pi gives us 2 pi. And now this is correct because negative 24 over 25 will land in quadrants 3 or 4 because pi and pi over 2 pi are in these two quadrants over here. You are only able to change this using your double angle formula. You cannot use it with your compound angle formulas, okay? So remember, because we are multiplying the angle by 2, you have to multiply the restrictions by 2 as well. So does this make more sense now? It's just gonna take a bit of practice during the homework to get used to it, okay? So with this, with this lesson, there's going to be a lot of let statements. Uh, so just, you know, be aware of what let statements you are going to use uh, when it comes to using the double angle formulas. So now we're going to go back to the first question the lesson asked us is how would we evaluate something that had an angle of pi over 8? So <clears throat> we want to evaluate sine of pi over 8 exactly. So what we're going to do first is we're going to let a equal to pi over 8. So what this means
is we get 2 times 2 pi times power over 8, sorry. Which gives us pi over 4. Okay? But now what we have to do is figure out which double angle formula are we going to use. Because remember, when we're doing the left side of a double angle formula, we have two times x or two times a, right? So now we're going to use uh, the, the uh, identity that we learned. We're going to use cos squared a plus sine squared a is equal to 1. And we are going to use one of those double angle formulas. Okay? So because we have sine, the only one that involves sine in that particular set of three equations is cos of 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So we already know that a is equal to pi over 8, so we're just going to sub in pi over 8 for a. So we have cos of 2 times pi over 8 is equal to 1 minus 2 times sine squared pi over 8, which means we got cos of pi over 4, which is what we got here is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of pi over 8. So we need to do a couple of things first. Because we know our angle pi over 4 is a special angle triangle, what is the value of cosine at pi over 4? So we get root 2 over 2 is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of pi over 8. However, we don't know uh, what radian measure uh, pi over 8 gives us, and we don't want to use a decimal in our equation. So what we have to do now is add another let statement to make it easier for ourselves. Uh, so if you were to come up with a let statement, um, I just want to hear your ideas. What do you think our let statement would be to make this question a lot more easier? Let's see what you guys can come up with.
what do you think our let statement would be for this scenario? Sir, would it be let a represent pi over eight? Okay, we got part of it, right? Okay. So you're on the right track. So James said, let a be power eight, but we already used a, so let's just use w. So we're missing one thing in here. So if we let a, w be power over eight, so we're gonna get That doesn't that doesn't really help. The power over eight part is right, but we need to take out, we need to let, we need to add another variable to that power over eight. Close, but instead of close, we're gonna use sine because we already have it here. So we're gonna let w equal to sine power over eight. So we got root two over two is equal to one minus two w squared. And now it becomes easy to figure out what sine of power over eight is gonna give us. So all we're going to do is going to, we have to isolate for W. So we need to move W over to the other side to make it positive. So we get 2W squared is equal to 1 minus root 2 over 2. And when we simplify that, we get 2W squared is equal to 2 minus root 2 over 2. What would our next step be? So now we need to divide both sides by two. So we get W squared is equal to two minus root two over four. And the last step we need to do is square root both sides. So we get W is equal to plus or minus the square root of two minus root two over four. So where does root, what quadrant does power over eight land in? Which quadrant? So power over eight lands in quadrant one, okay? So can we leave the answer as plus or minus root two? Can we leave it as plus or minus two minus root two over four? Or do we have to specifically state which sign we're gonna keep it with? It has to be positive. So we're gonna leave it as W is equal to positive two minus root two over four. And because W is sine of power over eight, we get sine of power over eight is equal to two minus root two over four.
So I know this question is probably a bit confusing, okay, which I understand. Uh, it's the first day back from break and your brains are probably still not accustomed to school yet. Uh, so hopefully if you guys watch the lesson again, um, hopefully it'll just trigger uh, something to pop up in your head. So now we have our last example. So we have if tan x is equal to four over three, where x is less than or equal to pi, or greater than or equal to pi, and less than or equal to three pi over two, then we want to determine the exact value of tan x over two. So we know this involves tan. So the only double angle formula we have for tan is tan of 2a is equal to 2 tan a over 1 minus tan squared a. So what would our a v what would our a be in this case? What would we, what would we let our a value be? So that's a equal to We're going to let a is equal to x over 2. So now that we have let a is equal to x over 2, it's going to be pretty simple now. Okay? So you have 10 of 2 times x over 2 is equal to 2 times 10 of x over 2 over 1 minus 10 squared of x over 2. So our left side simplifies to tan of x is equal to 2 tan x over 2 over 1 minus tan squared x over 2. But before we discuss what our let statement is going to be, what is our left side going to equal? If we look at the problem again, we already have a ratio that is equal to 10 X. What is that ratio? Four over three. So we're gonna have four over three is equal to two 10 of X over two divided by one minus 10 squared X over two. So now think about what our let statement was in the previous question. So let W be what? What should we let W be? Oh, is it going to be 10x over 2? Yep, so we're going to let W be 10x over 2. So now what we're going to get is 2w over 1 minus w squared. So now all we have left to do is simplify and isolate for w. So we're going to get, we're going to cross multiply. So we get four times one minus W squared is equal to three times two W. When we simplify that, we get four minus four W squared is equal to six W. So now we're going to move everything from the left side over to the right side. So we get zero is equal to four W squared plus six W minus four. And what number can we factor out 
from that trinomial. We're going to factor out a 2. So we get 2 times 2w squared plus 3w minus 2. Now I'm going to need your brains to backtrack to polynomial functions. What does this trinomial factor into? So you get 2w minus 1 and w minus 2. Minus 2 or plus 2 for the last one? Plus. So we have our root set as w is equal to 1 over 2 and w is equal to negative 2. So we have one positive ratio and one negative ratio. Okay. So we have our first, we have our original restriction, which is pi is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3 pi over 2. So what quadrant does, does this expression land in or this restriction land in? This lands in quadrant 3. But since, ten, since, since we have 10 of x over 2, we have to adjust the restrictions to 10 of x over 2. So what would our new restrictions be because of 10 of x over 2? So remember, if in the last equation we had 2x, we multiplied by 2. This one, we just have to divide both sides by 2. So we're left with pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. And in which quadrant does this one land in? So this lands in quadrant two. So if this one lands in quadrant two, is 10 positive or negative in that quadrant? 10 is negative in quadrant two. So which of the two factors is our solution? Therefore, w is equal to negative 2. Like I mentioned so many times, guys, trigonometry is a puzzle that is kind of hard to solve. But once you get it, it becomes easy. So remember, we use a lot of let statements in this lesson. So for your homework, it's just fair to assume that you're going to be using a lot of let statements for your homework questions, okay? So remember, our let statement usually involved sine or cosine or tan, okay? Which means your let statements in your homework are most likely going to involve that, okay? I didn't give you guys your unit five assessment yet. Your thinking, your, your application and thinking. Um, I'll probably do that on Thursday with you. Um, so on Thursday, you'll have your unit five assignments. I'll give you guys a couple of days to study for that. Uh, tomorrow, we'll probably do two lessons. Uh, the next two lessons are about trig identities. 
So that's where we bring in double angle formulas, compound angle formulas, and the identities you learned from last year and combine them all together. So the Thursday is the, the seventh. So is that good with everyone? Uh, this Wednesday is afternoon. I don't have, it's B1 for the, for the Wednesday. I think next week you guys are here in the morning because I have A2 next week, I believe. One of the two. But anyways, besides that, uh, your assignment will be on Thursday. Um, if you guys want to start at 1230, I'm not opposed to it. I know you guys probably want to enjoy your day more uh, than be stuck here till 220. Uh, plus, if you guys have an assignment on that day and you guys are taking a long time, if we start at 1230, it gives you guys an extra hour and a bit uh, to finish it up. That way you guys are not stuck for time at the end and it's like 205 and you guys are here like, and you guys are like, damn, it's 205. I only have 15 minutes to finish this up. Yeah, we started at 1230. It's about one hour. It's, this is the same amount of time it takes me to do it from 105 to 210. So yeah, so on the on the days we're just on, we're supposed to be online. Um, I'm only doing one lesson, but on the days you guys are supposed to be in class, I'm going to be doing two or three lessons, uh, depending on how short they are. Uh, I think we should be done this unit by this week or early next week. Uh, logs is going to take us a couple days, and then we're going to get into rates of change, and then hopefully I'll have some news about the CPT um, next week at least. So yeah, and just so you guys, hopefully you guys assumed I am not working from home. I decided to work from the school only because I have the 